thank you sir uh, my name is uh, dr ramanjan gowda professor department of biotechnology i am going to present on the coleus force coli a vegetatively propagated medicinal plant for production of recombinant proteins as you know this is a field where uh, uh, not many people are working because of the the constraint in uh, even the uh, regulatory problems in fact they encounter when they want to test these products uh, on animal systems and others. Uh, where in uh, the Western countries like US, uh, uh, they are already uh, in the forefront in uh, production of these recombinant proteins. Even the FDA has recently approved a product for uh, uh, the uh, Gaucher disease. Uh, the first, the, this slide is about the safety assessment of plants to be used for recombinant protein production. The, the first and foremost, when we select any plant, we have to see uh, for the, uh, the incorporation of any gene, we have to see, see the weediness or invasiveness, the gene flow, the plant pest properties, and the impact on the uh, other uh, organism and impact on biodiversity. This is a common thing which we uh, see when we use any plant. But for the production of the recombinant proteins in plants, in fact, uh, the choice of the plant system is a very, very important thing because uh, the plant product it should be an edible one. This is a first and foremost one. Like uh, many people use tobacco as a, as a model crop because tobacco is a very uh, easy to do the transformation. You can incorporate any gene or they use Arabidopsis, but it's of no use. Even if you transform these plants, you cannot use it as a product. So that's why we have to choose an edible plant. And uh, the other thing is plants should be amenable for regeneration. This is a very important thing like many plants are recalcitrants. If you take any, as uh, we have seen in chickpea, legume crops, or maybe like uh, if you want to use uh, the peanuts, uh, uh, it's edible one, but still uh, as a legume crop, uh, it's, uh, it's not amenable for regeneration and transformation. With a very great difficulty, you can do it, of course. And uh, that's why, you know, it is uh, amenable, it should be amenable for regeneration. It should be a rich source of protein. The choice of the, the plant, uh, we had, what we use for edible vaccines or for the injectable vaccines, uh, that should be a rich source of protein. If you use, for example, tomato, uh, people like Dr. Charles Jansen from uh, Arizona Biodesign Institute, he has used the tomato or you mason. Uh, that was not a good choice because it, it accumulates a lot of water content. So it may not produce more protein. So we should use a plant which can produce more protein. And this should be fast growing and produce enough biomass. This is another thing. And uh, it should have a short life cycle. In fact, you should, you, you should harvest within three months or four months. It should be grown under tough weather conditions and it, it should not produce any pollen. That's a very important thing from the biosafety point of view. Like uh, what Anjan and the co-workers, they could produce the hepatitis B in banana. In fact, uh, the problem was uh, it took about 11 to 12 months to produce the fruits, and there was other problems were there. I may not, I will not uh, go for the discussion about that. What we did is about, in fact, in the addition, the first, per, first instant, actually, I used uh, the cantaloupe, musk melon, for production of uh, rabies vaccine. In fact, we have patented this technology also. Then uh, I saw there is a lot of some disadvantage in that. Then uh, we have chosen this particular plant, medicinal plant, uh, which is a very safe plant and uh, it is an edible plant, in fact, we can say. It means like you, you can make products out of this. So we have used coleus force coli, belongs to Lamiaceae, is an important medicinal plant with excellent export potential. Even they export this uh, the, uh, the roots of this plant. And uh, the other advantage is about high leaf biomass and it is vegetatively propagated and do not set seeds and regeneration is easy. So we can grow this in greenhouse or in four field condition. Because of this advantage, we chose this uh, plant. In fact, uh, the, uh, we, have, we have taken the uh, HPSAG gene for hepatitis uh, B uh, recombinant protein, uh, which is operated under 35S promoter using the gene construct PHB118. In fact, this 
gene we have obtained from Dr. Einstein and uh, Dr. Hugh Mason from Arizona Biodesign Institute under MOU. And we could uh, use, standardize the regeneration protocol for transformation of the scoliosis for scoli. Regeneration, you can see the callus formation is, is so good and shoot regeneration is also good. Then we could get uh, good shoots and you can see that uh, the, we could uh, uh, standardize the protocol for regeneration, very efficient regeneration protocol by using BAP and NAA. BAP, as you know, that for shoot production and NAA for the root production. You can see uh, very good plants you can, you can get out of this uh, protocol. Then what we did is once the uh, regeneration was standardized, we, we started transforming this plant using the HBSAG construct, which contained the, uh, the HBSAG gene and other 35S promoter. Uh, and uh, we have transformed these plants. So you can see that you, it's, it's a very easy for transformation. And we got uh, plants. You can see the number of plants. We have control plant and about eight transgenic plants. You see the growth of the transgenic plant and control plants. You don't you don't find any difference because they they are they are very uniform. In fact, so there was no uh, problem in their growth. And uh, we have tested the regeneration after the uh, regeneration and transformation. We tested these plants uh, with the PCR. We could see the integration of all the eight plants which I have shown earlier. You can see the presence of the gene. And this is the control plant, doesn't have the gene, and this is the, uh, the positive control. So that was the confirmation for presence of the gene. And the, we did the, uh, the protein extraction from these leaves, and you can see the 24KD and 48KD, uh, the, the protein in the, in, the, in the lines, actually. And uh, since it is, doesn't produce seeds and produce large biomass about 2.5 tons per hectare. Actually, you can keep on harvesting this uh, plant. In fact, uh, it, it, it keeps on growing about one, two, two months. Every two months, you can harvest the leaf, in fact. And it expresses the proteins, and uh, you, can, you can isolate the protein, or you can make product li like, uh, you can lyophilize this, uh, uh, the leaf products. In fact, we could found about 350 microgram per gram of fresh uh, weight of the leaf. And we did the best and blot, which shows the positive, and also tested the ELISA. Uh, we did the ELISA, and we could see the, the presence. We, we compared with the commercial vaccine, actually. Uh, we brought, we purchased from the, the shop, and we have control, we have, we have compared with that, and we could see that it is on par with the, uh, the, the commercial vaccine. And what we did is with the NCBS in GKVK, actually we collaborated and uh, we did some uh, uh, the electron microscope, uh, electron microscope studies where to see that uh, if the plant can accumulate the protein, it will be in the form of VLPs. That's a virus-like particles. You can just see that these are virus-like particles. Wherever the arrows are there, they are all virus-like particles. We could show the, the in, in fact, Hugh Mason has shown this type of things in tobaccos. But we have shown in the, in the coleus force coli, the accumulation is very good and uh, we, we could uh, show the presence of the VLP-like particles. So this is a proof to show that they, they can accumulate very efficiently, and we did, with the Bionits company, we did some uh, uh, tests, and we could show that they, they can produce a, a good amount of protein when, when you compare with the other commercial vaccines, in fact. Then all, we also tried with uh, another, uh, gene called the GAT65 gene. As you know, that GAT65 gene, uh, this, in fact, uh, we could produce uh, the protein, 65 KD protein, GAT65 pro protein, which is used for type 1 diabetes. In fact, as you know, that type 1 is a major problem in uh, many of the countries, especially in uh, uh, European countries compared to India, of course, uh, like uh, uh, type 2 we have, in fact, uh, compared to type 1, but still, uh, the type 2 people can become type 1 after some time, uh, so there is a major problem, but still even in Asian countries we have the type 1 also. 
uh, which, which we can use for even for detection purpose, you can, you can transform this coleus plant and produce this recombinant protein and you can use it for detecting the type 1, uh, type 1 disease for a diagnostic purpose you can use it in fact. And also they have experimented this uh, produced, uh, GAT65 produced uh, protein in E. coli and uh, they, could, they could come out with results like to, to cure the type 1 diabetes in fact, means like not the curing, it's a controlling the type 1 diabetes in fact. So what we did is first uh, thing is uh, instead before going for the transformation through tissue culture, we, we wanted to see uh, with the agrofiltration in fact, the agrofiltration method in fact, uh, we could show that the, the presence of the, the protein, in fact the, the protein size was a little bit reduced because of the, the folding and other things. And uh, we have tested this uh, uh, protein extracted after 24, 48 and 72 hours and we found that the 72 hours is better than the other, other systems like means like extracting after uh, 24 and 48 hours. And the agrofiltration was very much successful. We could show the, the, the protein purified. And also we did the dot blot analysis. In this dot blot analysis, you can see the, the presence of the, the protein. After 72 hours, it's better than the other, other uh, uh, time, like 24, 48, or even up to 96 hours, we did that. And uh, the ELISA results also have shown that uh, 72 hours of uh, the agrofiltration is better. And um, in conclusion, we can say that uh, out of eight, eight hardened plants uh, of these plants, like uh, we could confirm all the plants were, uh, were uh, having this HBSAG gene and we could show through via dot plot, PCR and western blot and uh, these electron microscope sh studies have shown the VLP virus like particles in leaves of coleus force coli H expressing HBSAG and the plant crude protein has been extracted and used for some animal studies and results showed higher titer value compared to commercial HBSAG vaccine in some cases and the transient expression of GAT65 in coleus force coli showed highest protein expression at 72 after agrophy infiltration. From this we can conclude coleus force coli can be used as a plant system to produce recombinant proteins without the fear of pollen transfer and abundant protein accumulation in leaves. Thank you.